Hello everybody, it's a wonderful Monday and I'm in here getting ready to try to do something to this hair before I lay down. I'm in my, uh, y'all see some dark spots here? This is my um gown that I use to do my hair, to dye my hair and do my hair in. So if you see dark spots, it's just dye, honey. Okay, it's just dye. But anyway, y'all see the gray. I'm a grandma. Yes, I am. But anyway, I wanted to come on real quick and talk to you guys and encourage you all to do what? To continue to trust the process of God in your life, in your marriage, in your singleness, in your children's lives, in your co-workers' lives, in your friends' lives. Trust the process of God in your life. I had an opportunity. Oh, Lord. I had an opportunity to, um, and what I'm using is, this is glycerin. I use glycerin and just water. So they glycerin and water in here. I'm going to try to braid my hair going down and see what the result's going to be in the morning. Leave that part right there. Okay. So anyway, I had an opportunity to, well, actually, I say maybe about two years ago, I, I had an opportunity to minister to this young man and his girlfriend. So at the time, the young man, he didn't want no parts of ministry, honey. He didn't want no parts of prayer. Mm -mm. It was unnecessary. He didn't want to have nothing to do with it. So I end up praying for the girlfriend while he just sat out and sat down and you know had his mean face on and all that kind of stuff but the lord ministered to her she is you know he literally had started crying too but when the spirit of god touched you the spirit of god just touched you honey so anywho at that time maybe about two years ago i want to say lord they gray hair everywhere honey so I want to say at that time, that young man did not want to talk about the Lord, didn't want to receive anything about the Lord, no prayer, no nothing. So anyway, <clears throat> over the weekend, I had an opportunity to pray with this young man again. And when I tell you, when me and this young man began to pray, he was he welcomed prayer. <laughs> he welcomed prayer. After I had talked to him for a little while, I was getting ready to um, leave. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, just as plain, pray with him. And the only thing I could think of, honey, was like, Lord, you remember now, about two years ago, this man didn't want to have nothing to do with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like the... Uh, Christians were talking about Paul. Look now, uh, Barabbas, Barnabas. This man over here been killing Christians. We we don't know about him. Now that's what I thought about, honey. So anyway, I obeyed the Lord, and I thank God that I did. This young man welcomed prayer, and as we begin to pray, y'all, the Spirit of God. Begin to move. The Spirit of God touched the young man. The man just began to pour out and cry. Just cry. And you know, I just thank God for his, for his anointing. I thank God for his touch. Because the Spirit of God is real. And I'm telling you, it's a process. God deals with it as all. It's a process. And um, I went and watched the Harriet Tubman movie, y'all. It is a, oh, you got to go see it, y'all. It is so inspirational. You have got to, got to see it. Ashley, I'm going to see it again, honey. That's how good it is. So anyway, oh, child, that's her. So anyway, in, I'm fitting to tell you something about the movie, y'all. So if you ain't seen it, forward this part because I'm getting ready to spoil it, okay? I am. I'm going to tell it now. There's a part in the movie well, Harriet Tubman, she's free, but she want her family free and other people free. 
Now, where she's at, the people there, they were born free. They don't know nothing about being born in slavery or being a slave or all the hardship. So, Harriet, tell me she had the burden to go get her people out. So, one day she walked in the room with everybody celebrating. And she began to tell them, y'all been free too long. She said, y'all been so free up here in your nice houses and... You know, you able to eat and move about and do whatever you want when you want. You've been free and you don't know nothing about how it is to be a slave. And I'm going to get these people. See, they didn't have the burden that Harriet Tubman had because they had never been slaves. And if they had been slaves, they had been free so long that they forgot about all the hardship that they went through. So I said all that to say this here. Sometimes we've been saved so long. Sometimes we have walked in our deliverance so long that we forget about the path that God brought us through. We forget about all the times we messed up. Forget about all the grace we needed. And after we used up all the grace, we had to ask God for some of his mercy. Have mercy. You see what I'm saying? So we have to trust the process of God in all of our lives. And don't forget where we came from. Don't forget where we came from. And I'm telling you, I'm just committed to love God. And you know, I don't know if I said this in my other video or not. You got to know a Pharisee from a woman at the well. You got to know the difference. You got to know when you're speaking to a Pharisee heart or you're speaking to a woman at the well's heart. Get it? The Lord taught the woman at the well. He was teaching her about worship. Because <clears throat> she wanted to worship him. But the Pharisees, Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. He told them that they must be born again. Because their hearts was hard. So you got to know the difference when you ministering to people. I'm telling you. We better be careful, honey. We had better be careful. But I said, you what? I'm committed to love. I am. I'm committed to love. And I'm committed to know the difference from when I, when I see a sheep in wolf's clothing from somebody that really want to worship God. I sure am. So we better trust the process of God in all of our lives. Because I'm telling you, honey, I know. Now, I'm free, honey. I've been delivered a, a good while, and I'm still walking in my freedom. I don't, I'm not in no relationship with the devil no more, and I thank God for that, honey. But sometimes I think we've been saved too long, honey. We done got us old Pharisee heart, honey. My God, and I was watching the Miss Divinely Purpose video, and then she was talking about that thing. And um, somebody had left a comment on her page saying that we should judge, we can't judge people, but we can show judge the fruit of the person. And you absolutely right. And I had commented and said, yeah, we are to judge the fruit, but you make sure you judge it in the right season. Make sure you judge the fruit when it's ripe. Judge the fruit when it's ready to fall off the, off the tree. Don't judge the fruit in the process. Don't judge the fruit why it's, why it's, it's, it's still inside the uh, branch. Don't judge it then. There's a process to that fruit taking full uh, to fruition. There's a process to that apple. There's a process to that orange. Don't walk up to the orange when it's still in seed state. You got to ju judge the fruit in its proper season. When it's ripe and ready to fall off the tree. My God, if we can allow an orange and an apple to have a process, we are showing sure about to allow people to have a process. I tell you what, Holy Spirit, that is so good. I love you. I love the Holy Spirit. Can't he just break it down? Yep, judge the fruit. You sure is right. But not before it's time. But anyway, I just want to come on and encourage you all to... uh. Trust the process of God in your life. Amen. Judge yourself accordingly. Holy Spirit is real, honey. He sure is. 
And I love him. Love him, love him. And, and let me say this. For those of you all that think I'm being deceived, child, think I don't know what my Bible say, trust me, honey. I'm in God's care, baby. When you get to him, I'm going to be there too, baby. We might not get there at the same time, but I promise you, Yvette going to be there too. And I love y'all, and y'all be encouraged. And I'm going to come back on. I think I might do another video tomorrow and do a story time for my single ladies. I want to talk and minister to single ladies that's in, say you got saved and you got a boyfriend or you're living with somebody and you don't know what to do about the situation. You don't want to put the man out. He ain't got nowhere to go. Or you're a single female and you've been in a relationship and you, and you don't know how to tell this man that you can't see him no more because you got saved and oh you just so scared you know he gonna leave you and all that kind of stuff well i'm gonna come on here tomorrow i might do it for my morning minutes in the morning and we're gonna just i'm, I'm gonna help you ladies but i got to tell my own story to help you ladies get the strength and the courage to how how to continue to serve god as a single if you got a live-in boyfriend or if you send somebody and you're afraid to let them know you say because you know they're probably going to leave you alone. So we, I'm going to share my story and encourage your hearts on tomorrow. All right, I think that's all. But commit to love one another because the devil wants to kill us all, baby. <laughs> all right. Love you guys. Have a wonderful night. Have peace tonight. May you all sleep well and may you all be safe. And have a wonderful Tuesday if the Lord allows us to see it. All right. Blessings.